President, please be seated. The court is back in session. Before I give the floor to the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia to resume his line of questioning, the chamber would like to remind all parties that yesterday I informed the co-prosecutors to get the with legal lawyers in relation to questioning of uh, this witness. I instructed uh, co-prosecutors and legal lawyers that uh, the questions should be simple and precise and also short. This witness, as I said yesterday, has difficulty in the speaking Khmer because as far as we concerned, uh, he, is, he has a different language, different culture and tradition from that of Khmer. So in order that the chamber can uh, ascertain, ascertain the truth in this case, uh, the question should be short and precise. I noticed that uh, parties in the previous session uh, changed their position when they address the court. They appear to deliver speeches uh, to the chamber. So once again, uh, the chamber reminds uh, everyone to stick to the formal questions allowed by the chamber, and we have allowed and allowed such practice for over seven years. And in addition to this, the chamber wishes to inform that the party has to adhere to their professionalism when they address the chamber. Please avoid any disparaging speech here in this courtroom. Now, the chamber gives the floor to the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia to resume his line of questioning. You may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, before I start, Mr. President, um, both the Kyu Sampan defense team and, and we are a bit concerned about the time that we still have left. We noticed that um, I was objected to about nine or ten times. Um, yesterday, there was also an additional 20 minutes for the prosecution. So. We are inquiring as to how much time both defense teams uh, still have today. President, we are not competing each other here. However, if uh, you made a request to have uh, 20 additional minutes for your time to question this witness, the chamber may grant you the request. However, questions with no basis uh, or irre irrelevant question will not be allowed uh, in this courtroom. And when one party is objecting to questions uh, put by another party, please uh, make it clear try to avoid uh, delivering any lengthy speech uh, before the chamber. So uh, we have to be clear on this matter. Uh, Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, uh, please. Uh, I need to react here. Since we will be speaking last, uh, the issue of extra time, of course, uh, will concern us particularly. So I would like to inform you that we're going to ask for 20 minutes of extra time so that uh, we can finish uh, our uh, cross-examination. Thank you. President, I told uh, you already uh, that uh, 
20 minutes uh, this uh, will be uh, granted to you when you put uh, significant or necessary question uh, to the witness. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, um, let me re go back to uh, November 1975. You went from Ampil, your village, to Prek Achi. Is that correct? Witness, yes, that is correct. I went to Prek Achi. And when you went from Ampil to Prekachi, did you follow the river and pass through three, or did you go another route? Answer. I went uh, on a boat along the river. I and then arrived at Stung Trong, and after Stung Trong, we were taken to uh, Song, Song Kai before we reached uh, Prey Achi. Do you remember roughly how many days or weeks after the rebellion in Kopal and Sve Kling you went? To Answer. I am not quite sure on this matter. I did not know how long before I reached Bread IG. After the rebellion, we were evacuated to Prey Aji. We were we were woken up uh, in at the night time, and we did not dare to say anything. Uh, villagers uh, in all houses uh, were woken up and uh, taken to Prey Aji. And as I said, uh, after the event took place after the rebellion, and when you went by boat from Ampil to Prekachi, following the Mekong and passing tree. Did you see any dead bodies, any corpses without head? The odd man Answer, no, I did not uh, see any corpses at the time. And when you arrived in Prekachi, um, did you hear anything about what had happened just before that in Tree? Answer. No. I did not know anything else beside the rebellion. So is it correct to say that in those three years that you were at Prekachi, uh, you never heard anything about killings in Tree Village? Answer, I was living in Prey Aji. I have never heard of any killings at uh, Tria village. Uh, in fact, when I was living in the Prey Aji, I did not hear any events about killings in Tria village. After I returned to uh, Prey Aji, that I heard about the incident of killings. Um, now, because of time, I will move on 
until uh, the end of your to the end of your stay in Prekachi. Um, you were told you said that peace had arrived and that you were allowed to go to Ampil. Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct. And after the replacement of, uh, of uh, the southwest zone, uh, we were uh, told that we could uh, come back to our village. And how many other Cham families went from Prekachi to Ampil? Answer. Regarding Prechi village, it was a, a rather big village. And uh, I did not know how many uh, villagers came uh, to uh, Ampil village at that time, but there were many of them in living in Ampil at that time and the Soy village. Do you know whether any other Cham families who were in Prekachi uh, could go back to Tree or could go to Tree? rather than Ampil. Answer. Yes, our uh, villagers from Atria uh, village uh, were allowed to go and live in the Preji village. And uh, some people from uh, Preji a Chi village uh, were taken uh, to be killed after they arrived uh, for a few days. I, I will make my question simpler. Were there families who had been living in Prekachi for three years uh, were sent to either Tree or to Krokchmar or to other villages? Witness, I'm sorry, uh, Council. I uh, do not get your question. Could you repeat it, please? I cannot get it. You said you have been living with your family in Plekchi for three years. Then you were told you are allowed to go back to your home village. Do you know whether other Cham villages were also allowed to go back to their home villages? Answer. Yes, we were told as such that uh, we were we would be allowed to go and live in our respective houses, and I did not know uh, where did uh, these people go to. Later on, I learned that. Uh, people from Prejachi were told to go back to their respective villages. However, they were taken uh, to be killed. Um, you went with your family to Ampil. Um, is it correct that you stayed there with your older sister, Afia? Answer, yes, that is correct. I uh, was living with my older sister. And you also said that in Ampil there were about 20 or 30 or 40 Cham families. Is that correct? Answer, yes, that is correct.
Yes, about that number living in Ompel village. And you also stated that you stayed for about a fortnight in Ampil village, correct? Well, answer, yes, it is about right. So I uh, stayed there for about uh, a fortnight, after which uh, we were uh, transferred to Kampong Tom. Kampong Tom? Answer. I'm sorry, I may have confused. After Preji, I, I uh, was uh, sent to three year, and uh, at that time that uh, they intended to take me to be, to be killed, I'm sorry, I uh, was not evaluated after I left uh, Preji. Let me uh, go back to Ampil again. Um, you were in Ampil, uh, and you stayed a fortnight, and you had to go because there was enough, not enough food. Is that what you said yesterday? My answer. I was not given any uh, food rations to eat. I uh, did not have any meal to eat before I was told to return. So when you moved then from Ampil to Tree, did your older sister Afia and those 20 or 40 families stay behind in Ampil? Uh, some people stayed behind in Soy uh, village and some others stayed behind in Ampil village. Uh, how about your older sister, Afia? Did she stay behind in Ampil? Answer. My older sister had not been evacuated uh, from uh, Ampil, so she stayed uh, uh, in Ampil village, uh, you know, from that, the time that I was evacuated until the time that I returned to Ampil village. You're now saying, and maybe that's the translation, evacuated. Um, I, I thought you said, um, that you decided yourself to leave Ampil because of food. President, please hold on, Mr. Witness. You may not proceed, International Deputy Co Prosecutor. Uh, yes, our objection is that the counsel is leading the witness and misstating the record. The witness testified uh, that he was instructed, along with others, to go from uh, Ampol to Tria. He never testified uh, that he decided to do this himself. Um, I, I will rephrase, Mr. President. Um, when you went from Ampil to Tria, uh, did you tell the person who instructed you that the Southwest Zone cadres in Prekachi had just before said you were allowed to go back to your home village? Answer, yes. The Southwest Zone cadre came to replace 
the previous uh, countries, and uh, we were told that uh, we could return back to our home villages. After during the fortnight period in Ampel village, uh, we were told that uh, we could go back to uh, go to live in our home villages. At that time, uh, Comrade Singh told us to leave for Trier village. But you were already in your home village, Ampil. So you left Ampil to go to Tree, but Tree wasn't your home village, correct? Answer. My uh, birth village was Ampil village. Uh, we were instructed to go to Tria village at that time. I understand, but, but just only 14 days before, you were instructed to go back to your home village, Ampil, and you stayed with your older sister. So why were you instructed to go to Tree? Answer. There were too many villagers in Ampel village, and uh, we were not allowed to stay in Ampel. The order from upper level went through village chiefs to order all, some of us to go to Trier village because uh, there were too many people already in Ampel village. But do you remember at the time thinking to say, well, I can stay with my older sister. Uh, there is enough food with my older sister, maybe. Answer. No, I could not stay in Ampel village. Uh, the village uh, chief uh, would know that uh, I insisted uh, living in the, the village uh, Ampel. And my older sister did not dare to put me in, that, in, in her house. It was a strict order at that time. But why go to Tree? Uh, why not go to Krok Chmar or to Svei Kleng? What was the reason to go to have to go to Tree? But from Tree, answer. Soldiers, the military, uh, were living in the whole area of the Tree village. Tree village was the place uh, where people were put and killed. People were placed in the houses in Tria village and killed afterwards. But when you were instructed to go to Tree, you, you didn't know that at the time, I presume. No, I did not know in at once. Uh, we were riding our ox carts, kitchen tools, uh, blankets, uh, sleeping mats, and our belongings uh, were placed on the ox cart. I'm trying to understand something. Um, Mr. Witness, you were instructed to go to Tree. You said then f your family was killed because they were charmed. But your sister, who was also charmed, was allowed to stay in Ampil. Can you explain that to me? Uh, 
uh, answer. Because my older sister had been living in uh, the Ampel village uh, for so long, because I uh, returned uh, from Prej Aji to Ampel, I was not allowed to stay in that Ampel village. And base people who had been already there in the Ampel village were allowed to stay in that Ampel village. But you also said there were about 20 or 40 Cham families in Ampil. Were they also, like your sister, allowed to stay? Wow. Answer, yes. It was the same situation uh, for those uh, families. Uh, since they had not been evacuated elsewhere, then uh, they were allowed to stay in that Ampel village. What happened to those 20 to 40 families? What happened to your older sister when she was in Ampel? sister lived in Ampel and nothing wrong was done to her. However, however later on, uh, she was assigned to go with the groups to uh, deal with the house uh, construction. She was with the other 20 uh, families. And later on, people kept uh, disappearing. And that's after I returned from Tree Village. I will finish. Um, I have still many questions, but uh, Mr. Witness, can you explain why your direct family was killed in Tria and because they were charm, as you said, but nothing happened to the families, the charm families in Ampil? What was the reason? Were you unlucky, or what, 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 what is the reason? Do you know? After we were evacuated from uh, Praji to the village, and I did not know why we were considered the new uh, jam after we were evacuated from Prechi, because previously we had lived in uh, that village and nothing <coughs> happened. And after uh, our return from Prechi, our right was not as called to that who had lived in that village. Um, Mr. President, I'm mindful of the time already passed another 10 minutes. For the record, I still have many questions um, to this witness, but I will give the floor now to the Kirsten Panti. President, thank you, Council, and the floor is now given to the defense team for Kirsten Paul. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. Ixen. My name is Anta Gise. I am international co-counsel for Mr. Kyo Sampan, and I have a few questions to put to you. The first question is as follows. You referred to the Kopal revolt, and in answer to a question put to you by the co-prosecutor, you stated that when the revolt took place, you were forbidden to cross over to get back to the village. So my first question is as follows. Who forbade you to cross over to get to Kopal? It was the soldiers who were guarding 
in the area. We were prohibited from uh, going. And if uh, someone insisted uh, on going, the person will be arrested and tied up. You state that it was the soldiers. Do you remember what force those soldiers belonged to? I do not know which unit uh, they attached to, but those soldiers uh, uh, could come from the district or the sector. And allow me to remind you that it was the uh, rainy season, and some people had to go and to collect grass for our cattle uh, on boat. The soldiers would uh, stop them and arrested them. Um, vous, uh, est-ce que vous pouvez confirmer que Can you confirm that Ampil, like Kriakchi and Trill, were in the east zone? Yes, uh, that area belongs to the east uh, zone. Later on, when the uh, southwest group arrived, they accused uh, the East Zone cadres of having a Vietnamese head. Est-ce que uh, vous pouvez m'indiquer si Can you tell me if you do know who were the persons in charge of the East Zone at the time of the Kopal revolt? I do not know anything about that. I do not know who was uh, leading the revolt. I will put my question to you be again because there may be a problem of understanding. Do you know who were the leaders of the East Zone at the time of the Kopal revolt in 1975? Don't, I don't know who was the uh, chief at the time. I heard about uh, Tokman, but Tokman was not in my area that often. He was usually based at uh, the rice fields area. Précisément, est-ce que vous vous souvenez To be very specific, when you were at Ampil before you went to Krachi, do you remember who was the chief, whether you are talking of the district or the commune was in office at the time? Recall the names of the commune chief or the district chief. Le and Love uh, were chief of the village, but for the uh, commune chief of a prayer J, I cannot recall the name. Qui vous a donné l'ordre Who ordered you to leave Ampil and go to Krachi? It was the security force, the village chief and the commune chief 
who gave us that order and they said that the order came from the uh, upper level from uh, and the order came through the chain of command for us uh, to go Vous évoquez des forces de sécurité. You have referred to security forces. Do you remember the name of any person who was chief of the security force who issued you that order? I remember some in Ampal village, namely uh, May and Horn. Horn is still uh, living today, but he is uh, very old. And there was another person uh, named May who uh, worked in the security in Ampal village. Later on, Sad was a uh, chief. Kop Sad was a chief. Quand vous dites plus tard, Kot when you said that Coxat became chief subsequently, when exactly did he assume his duties? That happened during the time that people were being killed. But uh, about 10 days after, he was taken away and killed too. At that time, those uh, village chiefs and other chiefs were taken away and killed and replaced by new chiefs. Donc, si je comprends bien votre déposition, so if I understand your testimony correctly, you are situating that event in 1978, is that correct? Well. Yes, uh, that was the year, that's when it happened. And according to you, well, in which commune was Coxat exactly? Was he in Ampil or in Trier? Coxat uh, was in Ampil. Uh, his parents also lived in Ampil. Donc, si je comprends bien. So if I understand correctly, you knew that he was chief. During the 15 days you spent at Ampo, after your return from Krichi, is that correct? Well, yes, that is correct. Vous avez évoqué à plusieurs reprises you made mention of a person called Seng on several occasions. Can you tell us what his exact position was? I heard uh, people saying that he was the Krochma District Committee and he was uh, in charge overall in the entire Kochma district. Est-ce que vous savez? Do you know what was his zone of origin? and when he was appointed.
when the Southwest group came from the other side of the, the river to liberate the area in the east zone, then the east zone cadre scattered, and from uh, that point onward, he uh, was known as the uh, district committee, and that's when the killing started. Dans votre PV de In E3 slash 51.95, your record of interview, you made mention of COXAT, and this is what you stated. And the ERN in French is as follows. 00278-0. ERN in Khmer, 00004429, and in English, 00242095. Coxat then became village chief. In spite of his race, his chum race, the situation God was progressively, we were neither authorized to write nor to read the um, charm language, end of quote. Now, did that situation deteriorate only in 1978? No. The situation intensified in 1978 until 1979, that is, until the day of the liberation uh, by the uh, Prime Minister. Est-ce que vous êtes sûr que... Are you sure that Coxat was appointed village chief only in 1978? It happened in 1978, that is when they started killing people and as I said, he didn't work uh, there for long. He only worked uh, for a uh, few months, and then he was taken away and killed. Est-ce que vous savez? Do you know whether Singh had other duties? outside of his functions as district chief, as you pointed out. No, I don't. However, I saw him riding his uh, motorbike uh, every day at that time, and he issued instructions uh, to uh, soldiers. Toujours le document E3. Still document E3 slash 5995, document 00274718 in French, ERN in English, 00242092, and Khmer 00004430. And this is what you state, and you are giving more details on. It's Meng uh, Osman, who relates what he said. Seng was at the same time military chief of the commune and commune chief. End of quote. Does that refresh your memory? That's in paragraph six. Wow, yeah. 
Yes, it does refresh uh, my uh, memory. And what you uh, write out is uh, correct. Lorsque vous when you were led to Trian and you got there, did you know who was in charge of Trier? Who was the village chief? I do not know who was the village chief of Trier at the time. I saw uh, many soldiers stationed in the village, and I saw Comrade Singh going backwards and forward uh, on his motorbike uh, to Trier village. Si j'ai bien compris votre déposition. If I properly understood your testimony, you stated that when you got to Trier village, you were all separated into groups of women and young girls. Did I understand you correctly? Ma. Yes, that is correct. At the mosque, we were instructed to, to, to sit there for a while, and then we were secreted into uh, different groups. The men, the single unmarried uh, women's group, and the women's group uh, with uh, children, the young children. Vous avez indiqué qu'ensuite vous vous êtes... You stated that you then came out of the mosque and you were led to traditional houses. Do you know whether the women remained in the mosque? Men were taken out first, and the women's group were allowed to remain, or were ordered to remain uh, in front of the uh, mosque. Although some of them wanted to, to go with the men, but they were prohibited from going. And later on, I did not know where they took those uh, women uh, to. They uh, disappeared. As for men, uh, we uh, were then tied up under the house. J'en viens maintenant au moment. Let us now talk about the time you, when you got in the traditional houses on stilts. You said that there were many houses around that particular location. My question is, how far was the nearest house to the house in which you were held in custody. The distance uh, or the gap uh, from one house to another was uh, between three meters to three meters or four meters. And you could uh, see through the cracks of the wall of people in the adjacent uh, house, as uh, rows of houses uh, were built along the river bank in a tree uh, village. Si les maisons étaient construites en rang, if the houses were built in rows, would I be right in saying that you could speak to uh, people who were in houses to the left of your house or to the right of your house. In which case, you were able to communicate with people in houses to your left or to your right, that is, left or right of the house where you were held. But yes, that is. Uh, Correct. We were not allowed to speak to one another, even if among us uh, 
within uh, one house, we were warned by uh, soldiers not to speak to one another, let alone speaking to others uh, in the adjacent houses. Je vous pose cette question. Uh, Mr. Ixen, I'm putting this question to you because I understood from your answer to the prosecutor that uh, you did say that you knew that there were charms in all the other houses because you were able to uh, communicate with them. Should I therefore understand from what you've just said that you were not able to communicate with the people who are very close to you? When we were walked by soldiers from the mosque, uh, we could speak uh, through uh, one another. And actually, I was asked where I was from, and I said uh, we came from Ampel village. And uh, that uh, com conversation took place uh, on the house that I was detained. And after that, we were prohibited from speaking to one another. Donc, si je comprends bien. So if I understand your answer correctly, it means that from the time when you arrived in the house, you could no longer speak to people in the other houses. Is that correct? You are not able to talk to them anymore. But that yes, that is correct. We could not communicate with one another in the same house, nor to others at the adjacent houses. Vous, um, vous avez you also stated that at the time of your flight, it was dark and it was raining, and that is what made it possible for you to flee without being noticed by the soldiers. Did I properly understand your testimony? Yes, uh, that is correct. Uh, at that time, it was dark and it was uh, raining, and that was a chance for me to uh, sleep through and to sleep away. If I understood your testimony correctly, you also explained that since it was dark and raining, when you arrived uh, next to a pile of clothes, you did not see the clothes, but you kind of felt that they were there. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. I felt uh, the clothes. That is after I crawled uh, from uh, the house. And actually, I uh, felt and touched my water container amongst the piles of the clothes. So once I uh, touched the uh, water container, I realized that it was a, a pile of uh, clothes. I ask for this clarification because in the Sir Osman's work document E3-9334, this is what is stated. Uh, let me give the RNs in French, 00274. 725 in English 00204443 ERN in Khmer 00204438 and I quote 
at midnight, having noticed that the Khmer Rouge were resting or to drink, I, uh, I came out from the, and I saw a big pile of clothes. I got across those clothes. I later arrived on the riverbank, and then I saw a pile of clothes belonging to my family, and it was my wife who had been in charge of those clothes when we left, and then I therefore understood that my wife and child were dead. And I also saw a canteen next to that. It was also mine. I took it and walked into the river with it. The French translation is very bad. And I floated along with the current, clutching that canteen, end of quotes. Part of it was free translation. My question to you is as follows. Is it correct that what happened was that you caught a glimpse of a pile of clothes, and then you swam to flee, and you finally stated that you didn't see your wife and child who are dead. And all this has nothing to do with the extract I've just read out to you. I was uh, sure about uh, uh, that. Let me put the question to you again because I think there was a uh, misunderstanding. So I read out to you an excerpt uh, in which you, it is indicated that you recognize the clothes from your family, but here before the chamber, you said that you had not seen the clothes. So can you tell me which uh, is uh, the true story? Answer. I touched uh, the clothes and uh, the water container. I did not know whose clothes was it. Um, however, I recognized that the container belonged to me because there was a string tied to that container and uh, there were clothes at the place where I crawled to. Uh, Mr. Pre Mr. President, uh, I am done with this line of questioning, so it might be a good time uh, to break for lunch. President, thank you. It is now lunch break. The chamber will take a break from now until 1.30 to resume our hearing. Court officer, please find a proper room for this witness during the lunch break and please invite him back into the courtroom before the chamber at 1.30. Security personnel are instructed to bring Mr. Kilsen Pawn back to the holding cell downstairs and please have him returned into the courtroom before 1.30. The court is now in recess. <laughs>